This conference will now be recorded. All right, can you guys see my screen? Yes. Ah. Okay, great. Okay, so in the previous session, we were uh, taking a look at about the um, charge related message types, and we also did complete about the appointment related message types. So today we will go through the rest of the message types that are there. So we have uh, ORM ORU message type still to complete. I've included a couple of more about query query interfaces, about acknowledgement interfaces, and uh, and also about MDM interfaces, which we'll be taking a look at. So an order message. What is an order message? An order message is nothing but um, a test or a lab a lab order that has been placed from EHR and this order message will pass on from um, EHR to the lab system whenever a doctor places an order in the EHR system. So usually this contains uh, the segments uh, which are shown on the screen MSH, EVN, PID, OBR, ORC, NTE and IN1. So IN1 is not always seen, but at times uh, in case if the lab system themselves uh, are generating an insurance claim, then at that point of time, they might request the EHR system to send the insurance as well along with the order message. So it entirely depends on the workflow that the hospital is choosing, a hospital and lab are choosing. So the other day I have explained that there are two possibilities. Number one uh, would be for the uh, there will be an agreement between the lab and the hospital that lab will be paid on a daily basis by the hospital. Hospital will at the end of the day they will generate the claims and they will get it settled with the insurance company. Second scenario is um, lab lab system uh, guys might say that you just uh, send us the patients we will uh, we will generate our own claims and we will send it to insurance company and get it settled so in second scenario definitely the lab system would need the insurance company insurance details of the patient so that they can raise the claim and send it over to the insurance company so depending on the scenario we might see at times in one and at times we might not see in one segment in the message okay so let us take it look at the message uh, structure and uh, so we know that we have taken a look at MSH EVN PID so we won't be covering that today we'll be taking a look at rest of the messages which are not covered So OBR segment is the main um, yeah. So OBR segment is the main segment in an order message. So what does that include? Uh, that includes the entire order information, which has to be sent across to the lab. So this is an observation request segment. So it usually has. Uh, OBR1 is set ID. So why do we need a set ID? Let us say we have uh, multiple orders that has been placed in EHR. So uh, let us say we have a blood culture that has been ordered and and uh, sorry a blood test uh, that has been ordered and we also have a urine culture that has been ordered. 
so two are two different orders altogether but both of them have to be tested for that particular patient so in this scenario there are two possibilities again one hospital and lab usually lab is the one who is going to receive that order right so they might say that we want to receive one order only per message okay in in that point of time we would send only one obr segment in the hl7 message representing one order now there will be another scenario as well where they might say that they want to uh, they might they might say we want all the orders in one single message so at that point of time you will be seeing that there are more than one obr segment one obr segment for complete blood count other other obr segment is for uh, the urine culture so all both the segments will be included within the same message and set id is the one which will assign the sequence uh, sequence number one sequence number two three and so on for the obr segments so that is where we see that sequence number plays an important role then we have obr2 obr2 is placer order number as we have seen earlier for each and every uh, data field not data field but um, data component on a broader level that we are dealing with will have its own id identifier in order to identify that particular data segment when i say that uh, for example if we if you look at patient at a high level patient will have patient id and if you look at appointments at a high level appointments will have appointment ids and uh, if you look at list of doctors at a very high level in the PM system, each doctor will have their own ID. In the same way, uh, when we broadly categorize them, orders are one of the data components that we are going to deal with on a very high level. And each and every order has also to be uniquely identified within the system, right? So for that purpose, we have placer order number, usually called as requisition number. Um, and whenever we place an order and whenever an order gets registered or saved to the database each and every order will have its own unique id so using that unique id it will uniquely identify and any order at any given point of time how this is useful this is pretty much useful when you get back a result how we will take a look at that later now when we come to the result component or result side of the system uh, but now just remember that obr2 is placer order number which is also called as order id or requisition id most popularly called as requisition id uh, because that is the normal term used in hospitals to represent an order the next we have obr3 filler order number so obr2 is placer order number which is nothing but the order id generated by the placing system which is the hr system next three is filler order number filler order number as the name itself suggests it is an order id or the basically the result id which is being sent back from the lab system to the hr system so usually this comes back in a result message not in an order message you don't see this uh, particular thing in the order message you only see this in the result message this is usually called as accession number which is used to uniquely identify a result message result message or result uh, whenever we receive it so what happens is in the same way what we have done here in the hr system that whenever an order is placed that order will have a unique id in a very similar way when a result is generated in the lab system each and every result will have its own unique id so that unique result id will be shown in obr3 next we have obr4 which is universal service identifier uh, which is nothing but the test id and test name so what is test id and test name we have huge list of orders that can be placed on ehr side right each and every test is uniquely identified with the help of one of the other uh, library called as Loinic codes or 
snowmet codes or cpt codes any one of them it, it depends on the ehr system that is going to uh, that is going to be uh, used but the thing is obr4 will always have a unique test id and test name for example if cbc cbc cpt code of cbc is uh, 95025 let us say that is the code for cbc for example then whenever we send out an order in obr4 we do send that order id uh, sorry test id and then we also send the test name so we send it as 95025 carrot and then the test name okay so obr4 is usually used to identify uniquely the test id and test name so little concept here um, whenever we have an interaction between a lab and the hospital it is not always essential that obr4 will have the universal identifiers uh, that being said now in the example that we discussed i said that obr5 obr4 will have uh, the test id and test name and the test id could be any one of the unique identifiers like it might be a cpt code it might be a loinic code or it might be a snowmet code but it is not always essential that only the snowmet codes um, which are uh, which are standard may be used or any one of these standards might be used it is possible that at times you will see a custom code will be used in the obr4 uh, segment why is that um, for for few reasons lab will identify each and every order with their own unique id that they have assigned okay there are there are few reasons behind it um, uh, one of the reasons is repetitive uh, cpt codes or repetitive snowmet codes for two different tests that is one of the reason uh, but the scenario here is there are situations where uh, lab will use their own unique ids they won't go with the standard ids like they won't they won't go with the uh, snowmet code library they won't go with the cpt code library uh, for some x reasons so at that point of time what happens is lab will prepare a list of orders with the order name and the order id and will share that excel sheet with the hospital so what hospital does is they will open each and every test and they will assign that new id um, as a secondary id to the to each order that they are going to place and they will specifically mention for which lab this particular id has been given so what happens whenever doctor is placing the order even if he is looking at the cpt code and placing the order at the back end when the when an order is being sent out from the lab to the uh, from the ehr to the lab system the interface engine will ensure that it is using the unique id given by the lab and not the id given by the or selected by the doctor in the front end finally when the lab receives the order they will receive the order with their their own test id and their own test name in this way lab can easily identify the test and they can go ahead and perform the results and then send it back to the ehr so this concept is called called as order mapping which you might frequently hear in in the real time implementations orders and results implementations where lab will share their own unique ids for each and every test and we have to map that ids to the actual tests or actual uh, laboratory test information present in the ehr system okay and once you map them then it is interface engines work to ensure that they are sending the lab related test id when they send over an order message from ehr to the lab system so that is how it works next we have uh, obr7 which is observation date and time so this is generated this information is sent representing when exactly the uh, test has to be performed and then obr8 is observation end date and time so when the test should end that is represented in obr8 and then we have obr9 which is collection volume 
which means how much volume of uh, blood has to be collected or some other substance has to be collected that volume information is present in OVR 9 then we have OVR 16 which is ordering provider so this is one of the important fields in the NHL 7 message uh, when we talk specifically from orders perspective the reason being um, when you look at this one uh, who would be the ordering provider the doctor who is actually placing an order would be the ordering provider in the EHR system so when we send out an order message from EHR to lab we do send out this doctor's information in the HL7 message the significance of this is when a result is result is coming back in an HL7 message from lab to the EHR system we do need to notify doctor that a result for his patient has been arrived electronically so how does that happen that is satisfied through this particular data that is available in the order message so when the order is sent we do send the order order pro, ordering provider id information in the hl7 message and when the result is coming back even at that point of time you will see that in obr16 you will have ordering provider information and when the ehr system receives this result it will see who, who which provider information is present in obr16 and based on the information it will go ahead and um, it will go ahead and basically notify the provider a notification will be sent to the provider or the doctor stating that a result has arrived for so and so patient so that at that point of time doctor will go ahead and take a look at the result message and he will write his reviews whatever he has to write based on the result that he received in this way OVR 16 plays a very very important role for notification purposes and then next we have OVR 25 OVR 25 is result status which actually represents whether some result is a preliminary result or a intermediary result or a, or a uh, final result so status plays a major role uh, if it is a preliminary result then uh, doctor can take a look at the preliminary as well as final once the final is arrived so they can look at the differences for example uh, a sugar test which will have two phases one is before breakfast and after breakfast so we'll see that we'll have a preliminary test and then we'll have a final test as well so in that way OBR 25 represents the result status whether something is final or preliminary or intermediary whatever it is that is indicated in OBR 25 and next we have uh, OBR 28 which is which is result CCD result CC2 what does result CC mean um, usually it means that whenever we have uh, just give me one minute guys I'm just getting a call from my Hello. Hello. Yeah, hello. Hey, can you guys hear me? Yes, yes. 
okay I, I, I think there was some disconnect sorry about that so so we are looking at OBR 28 with which is uh, result copy 2 so as the name itself suggests it, it is usually used for sending a copy of the result to the um, to another provider or another doctor within the same hospital now let us look at the scenario let us see let us say doctor is placing an order for a complete blood count and when the order is sent to the lab system we do see that we are also sending OBR 28 information with some other doctor's name so basically the primary doctor whoever is placing the order want the entire information to be reviewed by another doctor it's another doctor as well along with him he also want to take opinion of another doctor within the same hospital maybe from different department so in instances like that we do send um, they will they will also select the copying provider then that result copying provider information will be sent out in OBR 28 so what happens is when the result comes back in an excel 7 message from lab to the hr system obviously a notification will be sent to the ordering provider we have already discussed about that a notification will be sent out from pms or uh, from the uh, as as a result arrives a notification will be sent at the same time another notification will be sent over to the secondary provider or the additional provider whose information is present in OBR 28 that is called a result copy 2 basically this happens for the for the review of both the providers about that specific lab test both will add their reviews and then uh, a final action plan will be taken based on the results so it is same like our email box in the email box when you when you send out an email or when you receive an email while sending out an email you do have this carbon copy option where you can cc a few other people who want to receive a carbon copy right in a very similar way we this you can say it as a carbon copy uh, obr 28 field where uh, we'll be sending provider information so that the secondary provider also gets notified about the result all right so next we have nt segment so what is an nt segment an nt segment is nothing but note segment which is very uh, very friendly i would say you can send any comment in the nt3 field nt1 is um, set id again because you will be seeing many number of NTEs in an in an order or a result message and then nt2 is source of comment you know, basically from where we are sending the comment whether it is an order comment or whether it is an appointment comment and so on and nt3 we have the actual comment which means uh, it will uh, it is a free text you can write anything as per your will and wish so nt3 plays a very important role in communicating about additional comments provided by the doctor for example if you are placing an order and uh, doctor wants some specifics within that order you know, or some specific methodology to test that order then at that point of time they will go ahead and send uh, information in nt3 okay so nt segment is not only seen in an order or a result message it can be seen in any message type um, most frequently you will see that in the orders and results interfaces but apparently it can be sent in any hl7 message there are no restrictions to that all right and then next we have uh, ORC so ORC is nothing but common order segment uh, it is pretty much uh, similar to the order message but let us say we have multiple orders in an HL7 message and then ORC segment will have uh, will have some order related information and whenever there is an ORC it means that there are multiple orders within that segment within that particular message 
okay not within a segment sorry within that hl7 message there is more than one obr segment each obr segment represents an order so in at that point of time you will see that <coughs> orc is present within the hl7 message representing common order segment so it, these also have uh, will have similar uh, message fields so the first one is um, order control so order control codes are nothing but whether uh, it is a child order or whether it is a combined order or whether it is a combined result so that information is present in orc1 so basically it represents the uh, status or we can say it represents the control of the entire hl7 message it will represent whether basically in most of the scenarios it will represent that it's a common order so that code is sent in orc1 next orc2 which is placer order number very similar like what we have seen in obr2 and obr3 uh, most of the fields will be almost almost same so orc2 is placer order number orc3 is filler order number orc4 is the group number which means it will it will have a number which represents the group number and indicates that there are many orders present within this particular uh, particular hl7 message so that group number is uniquely identified representing all the orders so that is present in orc4 then orc5 is the order status what we have seen in um, obr25 right the status of an order so the same order status will be sent in orc5 as well next we have orc9 which is date and time of transaction when exactly this order message got generated will be sent in orc9 and then we have orc12 where the ordering provider information is sent very similar to what we have seen in obr16 the ordering provider will be sent in orc12 as well next order effective date time this is the time when the order has to be performed uh, so let us say for a sugar test we we know that for a diabetic patient we have to perform a test before and after breakfast uh, so they will indicate the time there that some test has to be performed at 7 30 in the morning and something has to be performed after 10 30 or 11 o'clock in the morning so that effective date and time will be sent in or 15 if needed it is not always essential that it, that has to be there if needed then they will send it then we have orc 21 which is ordering facility name so that will directly indicate ordering facility name will indicate the facility hospital name and the uh, hospital physical address in the message all right that concludes our order related information next we have oru so oru is nothing but the result message so whenever we send out an order we obviously will receive a result back from the laboratory so that result information is present in oru oru uh, message so basically represented as oru r01 and uh, r01 is the event type oru is the message type and uh, the full form is observation request unsolicited so what are the segments present in an oru message we have a message we have evn we have pid obr obx and orc and nt so we have seen other segments already so we'll be taking a look at only obx segment so what is the significance of one more thing what is the significance of having an obr segment in a result message now let us say uh, we are sending out an order message and in an order message we are sending out an obr segment right but when we receive a result message from the lab if we don't have an obr segment how would someone tell uh, what is the 
I mean, which order this result is representing or for which order this result should go ahead and attach in the HR system. So that is purely dependent on the OBR segment that we are going to receive on the uh, in the in the result message that is sent from lab to EHR system because uh, based on that OBR segment in the result message lab will internal uh, EHR will internally go ahead and try to assign that particular result to an order which is what which is a, which was already sent out from the EHR system okay so that is the important role of having an OBR segment in a result message so how does it get attached in OBR 2 we do send the order ID right when we are sending out an order from the system from the HR system we do send the order ID in the OBR 2 seg two field when lab receives it they will receive the order they will save that order they will perform the test they are sending the result back they are sending the same OBR segment what we have sent the same information will be communicated back and when they are sending back, as we know, we have order ID in the OBR2 field. When EHR system receives this result, it will go ahead and try to find out that particular order ID within the EHR system. It will, be, it will obviously find one because the order has been placed from EHR itself. So as soon as it finds, it will bind that result to that order which was already there in the EHR system. So that completes a cycle. When the order is sent out from the HR system, it is an open order. We usually call it as an open order because it did not receive a result yet. Once the lab receives that order and will send out a result back from lab to the HR system. And when it comes back, that result will be assigned to the open order that is already uh, present open or sitting open in the HR system. And when that result is attached or assigned to that particular order that is when that order closes stating or representing that an order uh, cycle has been completed so that is a complete cycle order being sent from EHR to lab lab performing the results or tests and sending out the results back to the EHR system EHR will receive it and then it will go ahead and uh, will uh, it will go ahead and close that result close that order representing that a complete cycle has been completed okay which is why we definitely need an obr segment in a result message without that we won't be able to complete an order orders will keep open or orders will be open if we don't receive obr segment and that is not a proper workflow so we look at obx segment uh, we have a uh, few fields in the OBX segments that are important. So guys, I just want to let you know my laptop battery is not working properly and we don't have power here. Uh, it is showing 20 minutes right now. I am hoping that it will continue till the end. But in case oh, it is showing 13 minutes again. But in case if it drops uh we won't we will we will conclude the session there itself okay uh it might get disconnected all of a sudden so we'll continue till it is there so next is the uh, obx segment so as i said in obx1 we have set id set id represents the serial number or the sequence number of the results that we are receiving why do we need set id in a result message let us take a scenario of complete blood count. When you send out a complete blood count order from EHR to the lab system, complete blood count includes lot many components. It will include uh, uh, test to cover what is the count of RBC, what is the count of WBC, uh, what is the count of platelets, what is the count of neutrophils, basophils, and so on. There are many components which include in a blood test. So each component has to have separate information. For example, if you look at uh, hemoglobin, then hemoglobin, for hemoglobin we will have uh, the quantity, 
and the units of that quantity will have the status which which represents whether the HB is normal or abnormal and we'll also see what is the final flag I mean uh, the final flag whether it is uh, normal or abnormal and we'll also see uh, the usual range what is the usual range in a result so whenever you get a result these are the components that you will see basically other other information is also present but whenever you receive it uh, you will see this information the result name and uh, what is the current quantity what is the range of the normal quantity and whether it is normal or abnormal so these are the aspects that you will see so if each result has to communicate that and if a cbc has so many components each component has to be sent out separately right we cannot mix and club and send out everything in one so for that reason we'll have one obx segment for each component so when you send out one order message for cbc you will receive a result message along with one obr segment and multiple obx segment each obx segment will represent one component of that particular test that has been performed one comp one obx for wbc one obx for rbc one obx obx for platelet count uh, each one represents one specific result which is again subset of that main order itself it is it doesn't mean that it's a different test altogether because complete blood count includes so many components which is why we will see so many obx segments okay that is where obx uh, set id will play a major role then we have obx2 which is value type we'll discuss about this once we talk about obx5 because both are related next we have obx3 which is observation identifier in obr4 we did see that we have test id and test name right we had uh, for each and every test we are you going to uniquely identify the test ID and test name in a very similar way obx3 represent result ID and result name okay so that will be uniquely identified with the help of this particular field and a result will be uniquely identified with that then we have obx5 which is observation value so what is obx5 usually the test that is performed for example WBC count of WBC will be sent in OBX5 current patient count usually what is the range of uh, normal range of uh, WBC it is 4500 to 9000 that is the usual range but let us say uh, that let us say the patient has around 7000 WBC then that count that value will be sent in OBX5 field and what are the units used to calculate obx5 field will be sent in obx6 so that uh, doctor can know because few people will use uh, uh, various units and few other hospitals might use various units so it is very much essential that the units are clearly indicated within the result message next we have obx7 which is uh, reference range So it will indicate the reference range of any message. What is reference range? What is reference range? Uh, so what is the normal range which is or what is the accepted range of that particular test that has been performed is represented in OBX7. Then we have OBX8 which is interpretation code so it will let us know whether something is abnormal or normal or what is the status uh, same information is sent in obx11 as well whether the result status is uh, <coughs> just give me one minute guys yeah so uh, obx sorry obx8 represent interpretation code and obx uh, 11 represents observation result status which is which indicates whether a result is a final result or a preliminary result uh, or whether it is not, a, not, not able to see this uh, excel sheet oh 
one second. I think sharing has gone away now. Are you able to see it now? Hello? Yes, we are able to see now. Okay. All right, so OBX 11 indicates the result status, whether it is a final result or a preliminary result and all. Interpretation code is sent in OBX 8, which represents whether the test is normal, abnormal, uh, or what. Then we have OBX 14, which is uh, to send date time information of the uh, of that particular result. So it will indicate when exactly the result has been performed. So that concludes about the results. Then we now we will talk about OBX2 and OBX5 relationship. OBX5 will have observation value. So what does OBX5 represent? It is usually sending the value for for the test that has been performed. But there are various types of data that can be sent in OBX5. For example, now in a in a complete blood count test, we'll see that we are going to send some number value in the OBX5, right? Uh, the count of WBC is sent in OBX5. So that is a numeric value. At that point of time, the data type that is being sent in OBX2 will represent NM. Basically, OBX2 is always in relation with OBX5 based on the data content that is sent in obx5 the data type would change uh, in obx2 if it is a number you will see that obx2 is nm which is the data type for one of the hl7 uh, one of the data types in hl7 if it is a text field if obx5 is a text field like some alpha new alphabetical value then obx2 will be tx okay so once we complete the data types, you will get a picture of what I'm talking about about NM or TX or ED or RP. But the point is the data type of the data that is sent in OBX5 is is sent in OBX2. Okay, OBX2 always represents what kind of data is sent in OBX5, whether it's a numeric data or alphanumeric data or whether an alphabetical data, that information is sent in OBX5. Okay, so any questions guys? Uh, it's fine actually, it's fine. Okay, okay, great. So Clear. we'll conclude the session here. I think my laptop will die in four minutes. Uh, okay. So we'll, we'll continue from tomorrow. We have completed the topic that we had to complete today. Uh, okay. <laughs> Okay. Hello. Yeah. Hello. Yeah. I, I think I it, the laptop was shut down, so I okay. connected from phone. Okay. Anyway, so we'll we'll continue tomorrow. Okay. Yeah. Fine. Uh, so if you have any questions, you can email me and you can let me know. Okay. Sure. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you. All have a good day. Good day. Good day. Have a good day.